Hi everyone, this is Andrew Hoffman and today I wanted to show you a quick tutorial on how to make JSON save files in Godot 4 Plus and how to read JSON save files in Godot 4 Plus. Now there's a lot of tutorials across the internet about using save files in Godot, including some that provide documentation on how to build JSON save files, but what I found is almost all of those do not work with Godot 4 since there's been so many API changes to the built-in APIs within Godot, switching from Godot versions 3.x.x to 4.x.x. So let's dig right into it. So this is the roguelike, which is just a hobby project. I've shown it in some of my other videos. And you'll notice there's a lot of scenes in here. One thing about a save manager is the save manager is gonna provide the ability to save files and read from save files. And so there's a lot of scenes that are going to access to this. So rather than giving access only to one or two of these scenes, we're instead going to create this as a global which can be accessed by any of your scenes and any of the scripts within those scenes. So in our scripts folder down here, we're gonna create a new Godot script right here. And this is gonna be called save underscore manager dot GD. So we create this, we double click it to open it up in the editor. And then the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do to make this global is we're gonna to go to project up here, project settings, and under auto load, we have save manager right here. And we are going to name it save underscore manager to be consistent with our naming convention. If you don't see it right here, then click this file icon and you'll be able to search through all of your scripts to find the save manager file that you're looking for. And you might have to rename it because Godot will auto generate a node name over here. We're gonna click add. Really what this is gonna do is whenever you start your game, one of the first things that happens is a node is gonna pop up with the save manager attached to it. And it's also gonna be available in all of your scripts using the save manager right here, that global name. So it's globally namespaced. Okay, well, what's next? The first thing that we wanna do here is we do want it to extend node. So we're gonna extend the node class and that has to be extends with an S, so it's plural extends node, even though this is a single instance. This is just how the inheritance system works in Godot. Next, we're gonna want an object called JSON. So we're gonna say var JSON, lowercase equals JSON.new. This is a change between Godot 4 and Godot 3. So we have to instantiate a new copy of the JSON object that ships with Godot for every file that we want to make use of it in. We're gonna say var path is gonna be equal to user colon slash slash data dot JSON. And what happens here whenever we use user colon slash slash, in Windows environments, what Godot will do is it will put it in the app data directory under a subfolder that is just for your game. And a lot of video games do this. I don't know what it will do on Windows or Linux, but it does work on Windows or Linux. And if any of you know where that file save location will be, on those operating systems, please post it in the comments below the video. But moving on, this is gonna be where we store line number four, that's where we are gonna store the save file data. And then we wanna set up some default game state. So let's just say var data equals empty JSON array, or what is actually called a dictionary. Uh, this is a combination of keys and values in the Godot game engine. Uh, and in particular in GD script, the default scripting language of this game engine. So we'll create a new function. This function is gonna be called save. And we're gonna pass through some data every time we save. And inside of this function, what we want to do is we want to first open a specific file path. So we'll say var file equals file access. We're using the file access API dot open path. Path refers to line number four up here, the location of the save file. So path comma file access dot write. That's the permissions that we're granting in this particular line, line number nine. Next thing we're gonna do is say file dot store string json dot stringify content. So what we want to do is we want to store the value of content, but we wanna turn it into a JSON object beforehand. So calling json dot stringify, sorry, we wanna turn it into a string. So we take in a JSON as content, we turn it into a string, and then when we retrieve it, we're gonna turn it back into a JSON. Sorry for the confusion there. Next, what we're gonna do is close the file so we can preserve memory. We don't wanna just have this open when we're not making use of it. And finally, we're gonna do another trick with Godot to save a little bit more memory. 
where line number nine, we have this file object. We're just gonna set file equal to null. And this is a way of telling the garbage collector, we're absolutely not using this. We, we need it on line nine, we need it to store data. But then when we're done storing the data every time we save the game, then let's just close it up and allocate that memory to whatever else needs that memory. So we'll need a new function. We're starting this on line 14. It's gonna be called read save. And it does exactly what you expect. So function on line number eight, function save is going to take data and is gonna save it to the drive. And then read save line 14 is going to pull that data from the drive so we can make use of it. So again, we'll say var file equals file access dot open. We'll pass it the path and we'll do file access. Oh, as you can see, the autocomplete is pretty good. File access right here, click dot read. So when we're, we're reading a save, all we need is read access. When we are actually writing a save, and maybe I should rename this to write underscore save, then what we need is write. Um, and so, you know, using the principle of least privilege, we only want to give these functions the minimum permissions that they require to prevent side effects that we want to avoid. Next line. So now here we're gonna define content. We're gonna say json.parse string. So we're gonna parse a string and turn it into a JSON object. We're gonna say file.get as text. Okay, there we go. So file refers to line 15. We want to get it in text and then we wanna turn it into a JSON object and content and then we wanna return content. And the main difference between a JSON and a string, well, there's a number of differences, but for the purpose of save files, one of the good things about a JSON is we can really crack quickly uh, iterate through the content of that JSON and we can use a lot of functionality uh, and shortcuts. For example, we could, if we have an object that has multiple levels in a hierarchy, say vehicle.car.mazda, and we can, we can very just rapidly go through that data and get exactly what we're looking for. We don't have to write a parser for it as if it were just a string. And in the case that we store this in string data, we actually have to write our own parser. But JSON is an open source specification that simplifies a lot of this parsing of file content for us. So next what we wanna do is we want to have a function just for testing to create a blank save file or a starter save file. So we'll say func create new save file. So this is a, a function again, and then we say var file equal file access dot open. Now, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say res scripts default save dot JSON. There we go. And file access dot read. So what we wanna do is we kinda wanna have a default save file line 20. And we're, what's gonna happen is if there's no save file that exists, we're gonna pull in that de default save file and then we're gonna save it. And that'll give us like a starting structure, which is gonna be very helpful. So we say var content equals json.parse underscore string. And then we're gonna say file.get as text. So the file API within GD script will allow us to get content as text. Um, so we say content equals json.parse string file.get content as text. And file refers to line number 20 right here, the, the default save file that we're gonna have at scripts default save right here. And then we're gonna say data equals content. Okay. And then finally, so remember data is up here. This is our, our placeholder data. We're gonna sign it equal to the content from the default save file. And then we're gonna say save content. We could also just say save data. Um, for now, that's fine. We can clean up this code later. Now remember, we actually renamed save to write save to be more explicit in our naming conventions. So write save content. And finally, we want a ready function. So func underscore ready. What we wanna do in this ready function is in the future, we wanna check if there's a save file. If there isn't, we want to create new save file, line number 19, so that we have a default save available. In this case, we don't actually need to do that check because we're still testing. Um, and it really kind of depends on the game logic. You might actually have a stage where someone chooses a game slot. So they, they choose a save slot. So it depends on your specific game and the structure of that game. But for here, we're gonna say create new save file. Okay, so whenever this loads up in our kind of testing environment, we're just gonna create a new save file. 
Now in the future, because this save file, there's only one save slot, the save slot is right here. Every time this gets called, it's gonna overwrite that content. So for you, what you're eventually gonna to wanna to do is say, if save file does not exist, then create new save file, or what you're gonna to wanna to do is lead the user to a screen where they can choose one of many save files, and you have to give it a separate path per save file, and then if they click, for example, delete save, you're actually gonna to wanna to call create new save file, reset it to the defaults. So let's take a look at default underscore save.json. I actually already created that. So this is a roguelike game about wizards casting spells and such. So as you can see right here, I have a couple of keys. I have gold zero heroes. So this could be characters that you unlock throughout playing the game. Uh, maybe you pay gold or you obtain an achievement. In this case, you know, I had this idea of perhaps you have various achievements in the game and the achievements actually unlock characters, weapons, spells, etc. in the game rather than just giving you an achievement like on Steam. This is just a concept, this is just a hobby game. You can do whatever you'd like. The important part is that you have some default data here and the default data is gonna be really a data structure describing common data across all saves. In my case, all saves will have gold and all saves will have unlockables. And of course, unlock commissions, uh, conditions and such. Okay, so we go back to the save manager right here and it's all done. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna run the game and we run the game right here. And as you can see down here, we actually just printed all of this content down here. I actually believe I might've put this in another file. So let me figure out where I put this right. Okay, let's see, did I print? I did not print in here, I did not print in here. So we'll do a control shift F to search through our entire Godot game and we will look for print and let's find all the instances of print. So we have a print for current health, we have a print for communicating with a character, we have some printing for math, we have right here, yep, heroes.gd, I placed a function call, you can see I called the global save manager whenever this heroes.gd loads. So it says save data equals save manager dot read save, so it's gonna read the save, and then it says for i, in save data.heroes. So this is an example of using JSON to kind of iterate through an object. We can do it very easily with a loop. We're at heroes.push front i. So we're pushing this to the heroes array. And then of course we are printing the heroes. And if we jump back to our save manager and we look at read save, this is pretty self-explanatory. So down here we have the save manager. We have read save. Well what happens is when this first loads, it's going to say create new save file, right? So the first time this loads, and because we went to project settings, we put this on auto loader, it's gonna be one of the first nodes that loads into our game, right here, save manager. So it's gonna load before everything else. It's gonna create a new save file. Line number 20, we're gonna pull in this default save, and uh, then we are gonna push it into this path user slash slash data.json, which will be an app data on Windows. So the default save right, save right here has gold and heroes, and, um, and then, in our heroes file down here, heroes.gd, which is gonna be like a, and my thought was it would show all of your unlocked heroes in this roguelike game, is it's gonna go, as we saw right here, it's gonna say, read the save, get the JSON object, look at each hero that's unlocked, push it into this array, and then at the end of each line, it's going to print whatever was pushed into this array. So if we jump back to over here, we disable the game from its test environment, we run the project. You can see right here, we only have one hero. Um, the hero is a pyromancer. And of course there is like one specialization, which my thought was a separate set of spells, maybe some passive abilities. And uh, that is printed out as well. So this is how you handle saves using JSON in Godot 4.0 plus. First things first, you want to, just to recap, auto load, you create you create a new script, I called mine save manager, we put it in the auto loader, we give it a name so we can reference it globally. We have a couple of functions, write save, so we can write to the file system, read save, read to the file system, create new save file for when we need to load in a template when there is no data currently available. And then finally the ready function will have some logic for creating new save files, which is really loading in the default save template. And finally, whenever we want to access this, all we have to do is we have to, again, Control-Shift-F to search your whole repository. 
we look for print, scroll down to heroes.gd. Anytime we want to access the save manager, we refer to it by its global name, dot function, and of course, save manager dot read save. We'll pull in our save file, save manager dot write save, we'll write our save file, and any data that we need to write to that save to store the state of the game, we use the save manager for. And that is the end of this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. And uh, hopefully you consider using JSON as a format for your save files in your Godot games, provided these Godot games don't need to store an enormous amount of state in the save file. JSON is really good when it comes to storing a little bit of state that needs to be stored hierarchically and easy to access. It is not the best format when you're storing an enormous amount of state and you're looking for deep compression and minimum file sizes.